So, this talk is titled 3x Rails, but what does this title mean? This talk is about speeding up Rails framework, but I'm so sorry, I kind of failed to bring something like, hi guys, I brought a magical patch that makes Ruby on Rails three times faster, so let's just merge this and release Rails 15 now. <laughs> I, I, I kind of planned to do this on stage, but I'm sorry, I failed. <laughs> so instead, I'd like to discuss some like possibilities or points of view. Right? So again, what does the title 3x mean? Actually, this title is inspired by Matt's keynote at Ruby Kaigi last year and RubyConf, I think. In that keynote, he, Matt stated that he promised that Ruby 3.0 is going to be three, three times faster than Ruby 2. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> so, instead, um, it's actually, it's so easy to make Ruby on Rails three times faster. So easy. Because... <laughs> Everything we need to do is just to make no more performance regression in the Rails side and wait for, Rails, uh, oh, sorry, for Ruby 3. Then run your Rails applications on Ruby 3. That obviously should be three times faster Rails. Yeah. Win. <laughs> so anyway, my name is Akira. I'm on internet as a Matsuda, like this. I work on some open source projects like Ruby language and Rails framework. Also, I authored and maintaining some gem libraries like Kaminari, the pagination library. Um, active Decorator, Motorhead, Stateful, Enum, etc., etc. And I run a local Ruby user group called Asakusa.rb in Tokyo. Asakusa.rb was established in, I think, 2008. We're meeting up on every Ruby Tuesday, and we had so far. 356 meetups so far. So we have so many Ruby core committers in our members, like more than 30 people. And we had attendees from like about 20 different countries from all over the world. So it's quite a global local group, right? We welcome every visitors from um, any other countries, like, I mean, countries not, that are not listed here. So if you're interested in visiting our user group and if you're have, having chance visiting Tokyo, please contact me and come to our meetup. Also, I'm um, organizing a Ruby conference in Japan named Ruby Kaigi. Ruby Kaigi aims to be a, the most technical Ruby conference focusing on the Ruby, Ruby language itself. Last year's Ruby Kaigi was like this. And this year, we're having another Kaigi in September in Kyoto. Please know that the conference is not in Tokyo this year. Kyoto is an ancient capital of Japan. There remain so many historical like temples and shrines, gardens, and so on, like showed in these pictures. 
I just Googled for to Kyoto. This is the result. So I think Kyoto is the most beautiful city in Japan. So if you haven't been to Ruby Kaigi before and you're willing to, I think this year's one is a really good chance to enjoy both the conference and your trip. So, so please consider joining the conference. This year's venue looks like this. This is the picture of the main hall. Um, the second hall. And the venue has nice looking garden, Japanese garden. So, we're already selling the tickets and CFP is already open. So, please check out this official website and submit your talk or buy your ticket. So anyway, let's begin the actual talk. As I, as I told you, this talk is about speeding up the Rails framework, not your Rails application. To, to speed up software, firstly, we need to know its speed. And in order to measure the speed, we usually use like benchmarking software, like for example, benchmark IPS, or Ruby's built-in benchmark library. I prefer this benchmark IPS, for example, if you actually want to measure the performance of your Rails application. Um, for example, you can do something like this. It's in, I made a monkey patch, monkey patching Rails application dot call, and we run benchmark IPS. It actually kind of runs the request like 100 times. <laughs> I know it's horrible, horrible idea, but it kind of works. <laughs> and it benchmarks purely uh, the Rails part, right? I mean, it skips the browser sides. So, this outputs some score and The, um, so how can we improve the, the score? That's the topic of today's talk. My first trial is, of course, Ruby GC, because everyone knows that Ruby GC is so slow. Okay. I believe it just like stopping GC will improve our performance like 30%. So let's do this first. Um, to ob observe the GC, we have GC stat in the core library and we have GC tracer, which is made by Koichi. So for example, adding GC stat calls to the previous module it shows something like this, like it iterates 45 times in five seconds. And it outputs some like GC stat result. It shows that it's surely, surely GC is happening there like 50 times, right? So let's stop this, like GC disable. Then run the benchmark again. Then I got this result, 50, 50 iterations per five seconds. So the GC adds about 10% overhead in this benchmark. 
I think because Ruby is improve Ruby GC is improving recently, like this. We had so many improvements on GC module. So GC is actually no more 30% overhead. It's like just about 10% overhead. It's which is I think um, not a big deal. It's acceptable in my opinion. So I'd like to thank Koichi for doing this amazing work. Keep on doing this amazing work. And also thank you Heroku for supporting his activity. Thank you very much, Koichi and Heroku. By the way, let me know, not now talk a little bit more about Ruby 2.3 new feature, somewhat concerning to the garbage collection about strings. Strings in Rails used to be a big concern of the community. And there actually was a trend like sending a pull request with dot freeze, dot freeze, dot freeze, dot freeze in Rails and shows some micro benchmark which aims to make Rails faster. But honestly, I didn't like that kind of pull request because it kind of pollutes the code base, right? It just looks, looks ugly to me. So I proposed um, a magic comment to Ruby to freeze all string literals in the file just in order to stop the don't freeze pull requests. It's like this, frozen string little row true. It's already introduced in Ruby 2.3. It's all already available. So if you're interested, you may try. Actually, I have not tried myself yet, but maybe this will add some performance like Several percent, three or five percent, I guess. Maybe. Anyway, um, anyway, let's stop. Let, let's stop caring about the strings now. It's already solved problem, I think. And another Ruby myth is Ruby is slow because it's a scripting language. We have to parse and compile every time. So it's slower than compiled language. Is it true? I think it is true, but Ruby 2.3 has new feature that you can pre-compile Ruby code into a binary and you can load the binary. I'm not gonna talk about this in detail, because it's gonna, it's gonna be described by Koichi, the implementer his, himself. So don't miss Koichi's talk tomorrow about this. So which part of our simple Rails application takes time? This profile. To, to measure the whole performance, I used a benchmarking software to profile which part is actually slow. We use profiling software like StackProf or like RBLineProf. But again, I'm not gonna describe them in details in this presentation because you may have already known, heard of this, and you may know this, these tools. These are too par so powerful and um, so popular. Maybe you may have heard of this before. And also we have TracePoint, which is a built-in library in Ruby. Again, Koichi's work. You can simply 
count the number of method calls, and you can like hook into method Ruby method call and like um, put a hook into every method calls. So you can count the method calls like this. Like this is a sample uh, example um, rack middleware that counts every method call happening in, inside that rack middleware stack. So with this middleware, I get this output from my scaffolded Rails application. The most happening method call is save buffer HTML save and HTML save escape HTML um, attribute something things like this. However, these are just theories and I'm sorry, I'm gonna talk something different today through my experience and I know some like weird parts of Rails, um, weak parts of Rails, slow parts of Rails. I'm gonna talk about some of these in the rest of my time. So Rails consists of MVC. Which one do you think is the most heavy part. How about action pack, the C part? Action pack sits on top of so many rack middlewares that would make the method call stack very deep. Maybe that would be a bottleneck. And actually, Rails 5 introduces um, a new feature called Rails API. In order to reduce this rack middleware depth, I think. So let's measure. This is a very, again, very roughly written um, rack middleware like benchmarking tool. This outputs um, how how long did it take per each rack middleware? And I got a result like this. Less than 0 .0 .0, 0 .0, 0 0.0.0 something for every middleware, right? So it turns out there's no slow middleware in the default stack. I don't actually see any any other particularly slow part in action pack actually. Uh, besides routes, resolution, and URL helpers, which I'm not going to talk about today. So let's leave action pack and let's see this list again. There are some like safe buffer things and escape HTML things, which is obviously action view. Action view actually has some performance problems. I know that. So action view consists of like roughly these, these processes. It looks up the template, compiles the template, and renders the template, then returns the HTML strings to the browser. So let's start with the template lookup. Current implementation of template looking up is like this. It calls directory glob for every single template lookup. So the resolver queries to the file system per each request, actually per each um, render, render layout, render partial, each render, right? 
Couldn't we st speed this up? So I tried to make more optimized resolver over the default optimized resolver. The concept is like this. Um, just read the whole file system once and cache that. Cache all the file names, um, template file names in memory. So this is the trial implementation, which is already on GitHub. This basically just um, scans through the view path directory only when the application got the first access, then caches all the file names, then it performs the view file name comparison in memory, as I told you. And here is a benchmark proving the speed. And the result is like this. My version of template resolver is 18 times faster than the default resolver. In a very like carefully crafted micro benchmark. <laughs> <laughs> so another another issue I think is um, render partial. Render partial is basically slow because um, like it creates another buffer per each render partial. But in some cases, we don't need a new like new um, view context for each partial, like simply rendering footer, header, etc. So we can do, we, we probably can do something like PHP include and simply concatenate the partial into the parent um, template. And the implementation is, I'm sorry, still a work in progress. <laughs> this wasn't very easy as I expected. <laughs> so another idea is we can pass the full, full path file name into render partial call so that um, the template resolver doesn't have to look up all the view paths. The API will look like this. Render path with a full path file name or render relative, like require relative in Ruby. The implementation is, again, not yet done. <laughs> um, Another idea about rendering is render parallel. So we can parallelize render collection. So if you have 100 collection, maybe we can make the render collection 100 times faster with using threads, right? I actually tried this, but I saw so many too many connections error from Active Record. <laughs> it's obvious. <laughs> so this turns out to be a failure, I think. Another render method is render remote, which performs rendering via Ajax. particularly for a very heavy partial. Here's an implementation, which I did like two, three years ago. Um, <laughs> I found a repository. I looked at the repository like, um, like yesterday, but I forgot what does the, the name mean. <laughs> Anyway, the, the API is like this, very simple. Add remote true to your render call. Then this would perform the render, render partial call 
through the Ajax. It kind of already works. I'm sorry, but I'm not using it. But <laughs> so, another topic is encoding support in template rendering. The current implementation of rendering the template into a Ruby method is like this. It first dupes the given template source, the whole template string, and force encoding the source binary, source, um, I'm sorry, the source text to binary, and dupes the given template source again for like um, detecting the magic comment, encoding magic comment, then force encoding again for some reason, and finally encode in ERB. So many like encoding conversions. But who needs this feature? Who actually writes a non-UTF view file in your application? If any one of you does, please raise your hand. Wow, you do, <laughs> no? <laughs> no? Okay, so nobody in this room actually does use this feature. <laughs> actually, we, s sorry? Okay. Okay. <laughs> that might be possible, I think. But actually, the actual use case is probably for Japanese people because I see test cases like Shift GIS, Shift GIS, which I think is written by Yehuda. But I'm sure nobody does this in Japan. <laughs> It's just ridiculous. So, so the current state is <laughs> nobody needs this feature. So we just can remove this. Woo! <laughs> so here is my suggestion. <laughs> um, let's do this. <laughs> so here's a benchmark for this new version of ERB handler. Um, and this is the result. It kind of shows some improvement, but only one time five percent, uh, one time five time. 1.5 times faster. Because in this case, it includes the whole compilation process in the ERB side, not just the encoding conversions. And moreover, this would reduce the memory consumption, I suppose. So let's profile that with memory profiler. The, the code looks like this, benchmarking the memory consumption in, again, the benchmark IPS the, the inside the block that repeats the whole like template resolution. And the result is like this. It kind of shows some like memory reduce in strings, string objects. And in my opinion, memory, memory usage is very important. It's about speed, actually, because 
if we could reduce this, then we could put more containers, I mean, web um, workers in the web, web application container. So this really is about speed, right? So I'd like to propose removing the encoding support, maybe in rail six. So um, by the way, this is about the ERB hand handler. So if you're using Hamel, we have some alternative in implementations like this. So please try using these instead of the official Hamel. Um, the next topic is active support safe buffer. As we saw in the method calls graph, we call this so many times, which is currently a very ad hoc implementation. It has a flag inside the string object and flips the flag on and off. So I tried to like use Ruby's built-in tainted flag, but I failed. <laughs> but maybe we could make a faster version of safe buffer somehow, maybe in C extension, I guess. Um, the next topic is IIT NAN. Oh, sorry, I have only five more minutes, so I'll speed up my talk. Um, again, it's not yet done, but I have some work in progress in my this machine, which probably I'll I'll publish within a few days. The next topic is Active Record, and I have four four minutes for Active Record. <laughs> yeah. So um, my main concern. Is, about Active Record is RL objects when building queries. It just builds so many RL objects, RL node objects. So what if we directly build SQL strings from the like find or where parameters for very simple queries, like just where name equals to something or find by ID. Um, it's still not published, but it's almost working. And the <laughs> product is called RNI. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the um, implementation, the example. Like, if the find call accepts some like um, complex parameters, then it will pass the query to super. But for the simple ones, like find by ID or find by ID string, it directly compiles the SQL query. This is actually very cheap. Cheap. It's cheaper than compiling the um, like cache. I mean the um, like Arial node cache for what's that? What's the name? Um, adequate record. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna skip this part. So my next topic is model present. My advice about model present is never, do never hit model present because it's, it causes massive method calls inside. Like if you call, for example, current user present, how many method call will occur? So this is the answer. I see 85 method calls just for user.present, which is ridiculous. 
So I suggested a patch fixing this situation, but this would turn down. Because the Rails core team expects you not to do this. <laughs> <laughs> so please, please don't call present method on your active record model or put something like this in your application. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think I have no time running through all these slides. But this is about speeding up the real size initializers. This is about don't require pry doc, pry by bug, pry anything in your gem file. Um, this is about squashing all bundled gem files into one directory, which is currently not yet working. <laughs> um, um, requ using require relative instead require instead of required, which didn't show any significant speed improvement. Um, like detecting autoload, which causes some reg um, speed regression in pr production environment. Actually, I, find, I found two occurrences of autoload in production in Rails 5 which happens inside Rack 2. So, <laughs> please fix this, Aaron. About <laughs> um, speeding up test. Um, previously, our application took one minute on Circle CI just for like, preparing the schema, inserting 600 tables into the schema migration. So I changed this to this one single query, which makes, in our case, like 600 times fast, faster. Um, this is all already committed into Rails 5. So it's available in Rails 5. I'm skip, gonna skip this. Okay, some slow parts in active support, like multi-byte, time zones. So like multi-byte, it consists of multi-byte charts and multi-byte Unicode. It loads the whole Unicode database version eight, which sits inside act active support library but do we actually need this? I'm not sure. And I suppose at least we Japanese don't use this. <laughs> so we can just remove this in our case and make the framework smaller and make the boot time faster. The next one is time with zone. Here's a benchmark for a time versus time with zone. The result is time with zone is 25 times slower than the built-in time. So if you're sure you don't need time with zone, you just can replace your time with zone into time. I mean, if you're 100% sure what he's doing. <laughs> um, we can also boost some slow parts of Rails with C extensions. Here are some examples like CGI escape, CGI escape HTML, fast blank, hash with in indifferent axes. Some of these are already introduced into recent versions of Ruby. So please just use new versions of Ruby, which will bring you the speed, okay? 
Sorry for the time over. A conclusion. Um, so there is really no one single performance um, like bottleneck for everyone for every Rails application. Some apps might have 1,000 models. Some apps might have 3,000 lines of Rails RB. And the bottlenecks will change. So in my opinion, Rails is a makase, which is nice. But in some cases, we want to customize certain points of Rails framework. Maybe what we need is more flexibility, <laughs> like Merb used to have. <laughs> so there remain so many like slow parts in Rails, and there can be more like um, alternatives to these parts of Rails. So I would suggest to like make Rails more flexible to to be like Merv a little bit, and I hope everyone everyone here to reveal your hack and bring more like modularity diversity into the Rails community. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.